They didn't need teaching. The bloke stood there, he was supposed to be ministering with me, he was another minister, he spent a lot of time teaching. I said, this is not the time you should have called him back into the office later on and done the teaching. It's not the time. It's a time of ministry, it's a time to invite the Holy Spirit and let him do the ministry work. Because the ministry is the ministry of the Spirit, not the flesh. So often people have got bogged down with all that and saying far too much and trying to counsel people when it's time for ministry with the Spirit. If they need to have counseling, they need to make an appointment and sit down with the person and have counseling. Not the time in ministry to have a counseling session. Because what will happen is you'll cut across what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will give them a real deep counselling while they're on the floor. I might be dating counselling, I might be dating people going to Christian counselling and have a ministry. I'm not saying that. Don't hear me that way. But I don't believe in a time of ministry when we're calling people forward to minister to them, but that's what we do. It's a great thing to write it down. Is this too deep? It's not very simple, really. It's going to share, share a little honest and open level. It's a sign, so when the people fall down and we see the Spirit moving, it's a sign of the presence of God and the door is open for ministry. So often when, I, when I'm out in the streets and in the skate parks, we see uh, people touched with the power and they start to, to um, fall down and be immersed in the Spirit, I know the door's been open for ministry. And we just go with the flow. And sometimes that happens not long after you first get there, they go in Sometimes it's a bit longer, but the Holy Spirit begins to show, and we just know that He's here and He's ministering. Are there any questions? Are they different tonight? Or are they just fine? Fine. 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 Receive prayer from someone else to have the Holy Spirit's anointing because I, I, think, I, I think I've received it without having someone like Yeah, of course you can. Um, we can, anyone can simply lie in the bed, stand here, like I can say, come on, come and refresh you, come fill me. More power, I want more. And I just ask him, he'll come, and I can just sit in the hours and say, so you don't always have to have people to lay hands on to the last time. But one of my, as I said, my favourite things were when I go out often just do if you get close to somebody you say, come on Holy Spirit, come on, come on, help me Holy Spirit, come on, come on, come on, come on. I just be saying that because it keeps me conscious of how much I need him. It keeps me conscious of how much I need him. It helps me to take the focus of myself because I'm inadequate as, as an evangelist, as, as any sort of a uh, teacher, without him. And I always try when I'm here to be as transparent as I can about my own weakness and my own thoughts. And I've got a different style of delivery to some teachers and I'm just who I am and I just want to impart what God <coughs> wants to impart to you and I've got my own style of delivery. Sorry. Um, sure. Could you explain, you've asked us when we pray over yeah. somebody who's fallen down to on their tongue. Yeah. Can you explain that? Yes. One of the reasons that I often get people to do that is I want you to be involved in the ministry. So I want to involve other people in the ministry. It frees me up. Because I believe when someone has an encounter with the Holy Spirit, someone should stay there with them or be watching over them. So often I'll call people in and I'll say, You stay here and pray over them. And all you're doing is just thanking God for what He's doing. The Bible also says that rivers of living water will bubble up out of us. So what, what I'm getting you involved in is to call on the Holy Spirit more and more and more, more thank you for what you're doing, and just to, to have the Holy Spirit bubble up with him. So it, it seems often from experience um, that when I get people to pray over someone's coming, the Spirit bubbles, bubbles up, he ministers. Um, so that's... I can't give you a sound biblical thing other than the rivers of living water will bubble up. I just have a sense to give people a If you're a lady, I get to put the hand on the tummy. You put your hand on your shoulder and just thank the spirit too, it's not. I just get everyone with their own sort of style and 
and techniques, and if you lay there, try to get laid and put a hand, I tell you, get someone to put their hand in there. How many ladies look at the man who does this? Just point in. Uh, I'll just tell you what, what happened to me the first time yeah. I was sliding spirit. Needed the spirit. I fell down. The reason I fell down was because he wanted to heal me. Yeah. And he can't heal you if you're not relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I fell down. Yeah. That's how I worked it out. So yeah. while I was relaxed, he could then heal me. Yeah. And the lady that was with me, because people were standing there, yeah. there was somebody with me. Yeah. I was laying there for ages. People were getting up and the church was finished and people were getting up and leaving the church and yeah. stepping over and walking over yeah. and I was still on the floor. Anyway, she never left me. All she did was say, go with it. Mm -hmm. Go with it. Just relax, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Because it was the first time it happened to me. And you can snap out of it and just mm -hmm. not go with it and mm -hmm. spoil it. Mm -hmm. So her saying, it's okay, it's mm -hmm. fine, relax, enjoy it, just go with it, mm -hmm. made me that I thought mm -hmm. I had the full thing. Mm -hmm. If she wasn't there with me, mm -hmm. I would have went, oh, what was that? Yeah, exactly. And I would have missed it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have got it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I think that's, that's, that's it's good to have someone with us supporting us and letting us know it's okay, okay. and yeah. the comforting words. Yeah. And so often when, just the presence sometimes is right here or anywhere else and we've experienced the spirit and someone with you, I just think it's more comforting. Yeah. And it also gets the other people involved because you notice I want to put people in with you guys involved. So you become familiar with it, not quite. Not quite a lot of I shouldn't say it, because the Holy Spirit is in you. don't get frightened of what God's doing, it becomes something that you're used to. Uh, and used to be his ministry. So that while you're there and you're praying for someone, you may get a word for them. He may be stirring something up in you while you're there praying. But I reckon it's great to be involved. But somehow Holy Spirit will be able to minister to the person who's in the gym. And then it comes to your turn to receive prayer. I hope that's helpful. Um, the difference between the flesh manifesting and the demonic spirit manifesting, can you give any more clarity? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, people receive the spirit and it's more of emotional um, than it is demonic. And it can look very similar. When people are trying to deal with a demonic spirit and it's actually an emotional um, reaction from the person that the Holy Spirit's initiated. It is very, very hard, Sharon can tell you, it's very difficult. And the best thing that I can say, it's a matter of discernment. Have I always got it right? I guess I'm saying all the time, something's happening on the inside. I don't really confident that I don't know who's that. But all the time I'm saying, I don't know what you're doing. What, what